So yesterday, yeah, uh, during the show, I think first hour, yeah, I uh, I get a DM from Albert, and he's just like, you personally or from the show or what? Uh, yeah, me personally, yeah. Uh -huh. So it was like, hey, you know, I've tried to give Rich his space. You got. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, bring him on here. Hold on a second. He said, Albert Breer from Even Indiana I'm TV. not that mean, Albert said. Okay, Albert, are you, were you just, were you, I guess, spying on I didn't the show? I didn't want to be mean, but like I didn't have a chance. So I was on my feet, like some, I was on my feet for part of the day and I was uh -huh. on the train for another part of the day. Sure. So I, I would have listened to you guys live, but I was sort of like okay. doing stuff. And so I just wanted to catch your reaction and I didn't want to like, I don't know, man. Like, like at this point, it's just mean. It's like eight in a row, and it's the second straight year, you know, with the score in the fifties and a double-digit margin. And I just, I, I just wanted to give you your space. That's you know, all. and Albert, I, just, I, I, I appreciate that. But you were, were you mo so you were monitoring the show to see if no, I would I, not I, talk I about it. I wanted to hear your reaction. I wanted to hear. Like, what do you I, think I honestly, my reaction is? I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear your. I wanted to hear your take on Harbaugh. That's see, what I wanted to hear. But it's, and so I figured you'd have some sort of take on Harbaugh, which eventually I did. Like Chris, Chris said he'd post it. I don't think Chris, Chris, you didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't come through for me there. So I eventually listened to it in the podcast, and I did get Thank to you. hear your, uh, your, your take on Harbaugh. But I, I was just sort of interested because you're like, you know, you're a pretty reasonable guy. I, yeah. I was interested to see what, you're, what, what, what a reasonable guy who went to school there, who's passionate about where he went to school, yep. about what his take would be on Harbaugh post a second straight loss like that. Hmm. Do you think Harbaugh is going to get uh, NFL feelers like he has over the last few years? And what are you hearing about that, Albert? I think he's staying in Michigan, but I think he'll probably get some feelers. Yeah, and and I think that's part of that is because um, I think teams are going to be a little bit more. I would say a little bit more open-minded about where they look this year because everybody's been fishing off the same pier for the last couple of years. Everybody's been looking for the young, innovative, offensive mind, and um, you know. So I think that teams that that do have openings this year are going to look a little bit more outside the box. That's good news for you know defensive coordinator types, guys like you know Robert Sal out in San Francisco, Chris Richard in Dallas, Dennis Allen in New Orleans, Matt Eberflus in Indianapolis. And it's good news, too, I think, for some of the college coaches, even if they aren't planning on taking those jobs, because you know as well as I do, those can lead to raises. Oh, yeah. So you're going to hear names like, you know, like Matt Rule from Baylor, like Lincoln Riley from Oklahoma, um, like Urban Meyer. You, you, you've already heard his name some. And, you know, obviously, once teams start looking around the college ranks, Jim Harbaugh is just a natural call to make because he's been to a Super Bowl before. Well, I mean, we heard Jerry Jones today, Albert, um, basically say – that Garrett still has the opportunity to make a run and check boxes, not hit a raise a bar that the bar is not raised. He knows where, where the bar is. He just needs to check boxes. But that Jason Garrett's in his mind is 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 absolutely capable of doing the job to the point where he he said that uh, Jason Garrett will be coaching in the NFL next year, and just left it yeah, at that. And I yeah, and I think that that, to me, I think that J that, that Jerry's criticism of Jason mm -hmm. is um, is very interesting. The timing of it, like when it got when when it sort of got a little edgier, the timing of it's interesting because it, it was it coincided with reporting coming out, and I believe it was on your air. I think it was Ian, right, on Garrett potentially landing with the Giants, and I don't know that. I just put it this way. I don't think that that rubbed Jerry the right way. That, you know, they've, they're all in on this season and everything else, and that something like that would sort of emerge, I think, may have rubbed Jerry the wrong way and contributed to, you know, what he said, in addition to everything that happened in the New England game um, and his decision to get a little bit edgier with his criticism. And I think an important piece of this, too, Rich, when we're talking about where the bar is and, and what Jason Garrett needs to do um, to, to, to keep his job in Dallas, he doesn't have a contract for next year. Year and, and that's pretty rare. Like you do not often see teams send coaches into a lame duck year. Now the Cowboys have done it before with Jason. It's not the first time, but what it basically means is you can walk away from the from the from the coach with no financial repercussions, right? But if you're planning on keeping him, then you've got to 
put together a whole new contract of four or five years for the guy. And that means committing, you know, in most cases, $30, $40 million to to the coach that you've had in your building for the last few years. And so that's where I think the bar is high for Jason now. He's going to have to clear a bar that's going to convince the Jones family to go back in on him at that level. And that's why I think it's going to take more than just making the playoffs, especially with the NFC East being as down as it is for him to for him to remain there in charge of the Cowboys. And if, and if he's not in charge of the Cowboys, like Ian said a couple of weeks ago, I would expect that the Giants would kick the tires on him if they make a change. Albert Breer here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, let me just push back on that one. I just didn't think I, Giants fans, after what's happened, you know, to go from McAdoo to yeah. Shermer to go to the guy that – that couldn't get it done for the Dallas Cowboys, much to the delight of the Giants fan base for the last 10 years, to, for them to turn around and say this is the guy would be a very difficult sell in the New York City area, despite Garrett's uh, excellence yeah. as a human being as well as the X's and O's and being a former Giant Princeton guy in Jersey uh, connections. I, 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 that would be a tough sell to me, Albert. It really would. Oh. I'll give you I'll give you two pieces of information there. Okay, number one, um, this is this is sort of part and parcel to who um, to who John Mara's been as the owner, who the Mara family's been as owners. Um, that they value familiarity. It's one of the reasons why Dave Gettleman um, wound up you know getting the job as GM. It's why they hired Jerry Reese. It's why they brought Tom Coughlin back. Um, you know, after they fired, uh, I, I believe it was Fossil, right, all mm-hmm. those years ago. Um, so they value familiarity. They've got familiarity with Jason Garrett. Here's the other piece. Um, I know of a couple of coaches who've left New York and gone to Dallas um, over the last few years where when they had their exit interview with, with, uh, with the Maras, uh, the, basically the message on the way out the door was, we hate to lose you, but if there's one place, if there's one person that you're going to go work for, we don't mind that that person is Jason Garrett. So the Maras think very, very highly of Jason Garrett. Mm. And they've been not public about it, but I mean, like to 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 be willing to say those that, that sort of thing to outgoing coaches. I mean, you risk it getting out there, right? And so, you know, I do think that there's an affection for the Garrett family there um, from the Maras, and for Jason Garrett in particular, they have familiarity with him, and that's why it works. That said, I don't think Jason Garrett would be at the top of their list. I think right now, if they were going to make a change, I think Matt Rule from Baylor would probably be the guy at the top of the list. Wouldn't that be amazing? Because that's who I know who was on the Jets list and they decided to go with Gase because they thought Rule was too green and along with the rest of his coaching staff. Albert Breer here on the Rich Eisen Show. But let's, let's, let's be honest here. If you are an owner of a team that has, say, Dak, and you've got to give him $40 million a year or close to it, or you're mm-hmm. the owner of a team that's got, say, Baker, Mayfield, and you're the owner of a team of, say, Darnold, who you're going to have to make a decision on, do I give him a Goff or a Wentz contract coming up in the next couple of years? Or even, let's go down the list here, Dwayne Haskins, uh, Gardner Minshew, Drew Locke. I mean, these are just names. Why wouldn't you just throw yourself at Lincoln Riley and say, let's roll, and give an, an mm-hmm. absurd amount of money to that guy, Albert? I think I think some teams are going to, and and I know he got feelers last year. Um, I think that this is more like what you're talking about. I think it's more about what Lincoln wants to do than what NFL teams want to do. Because I I can tell you that um, you know over the course of the last two off seasons, if all 32 teams haven't been through there to watch tape with Lincoln Riley, I would tell you that the number is at least at 29 or 30. Almost every team has sent either a front office person or a coach through there to watch tape with him, to see what he does, to learn from him. Um, and that's a pretty powerful statement from the NFL um, as far as what they think of Lincoln Riley as an offensive mind. Um, but Lincoln Riley, you got to remember, has a job where the money is basically equal to, to, to what he'd be making in most NFL jobs. Um, living in a place with the cost of living um, isn't outrageous, and he's got all kinds of job security. And so I think there are a lot of people in football who would argue that Oklahoma, that job right there is Lincoln Riley has it right now, might be a top 15 job in the sport, you know, NFL teams included. And so you're going to have to convince Lincoln Riley to leave Norman, and that's, you know, I think going to be a difficult thing to do. Now, that said, he's a Texan. You grew up in Staten Island, right, Rich? Yes, sir. 
how hard would it be to tell a kid from Staten Island? How hard would it be for a kid from Staten Island to say no to managing the Yankees? <laughs> you, you bet, man. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's, oh, sure. what, I, that's what it oh, is, yeah. right? Like yeah. so, like for for Lincoln Riley being a Texan and having grown up there, um, and not knowing how often the Dallas Cowboys job is going to come open. If they come to you, then you know I think it's very, very difficult to say no. And you've got an established relationship with the Jones family. Lincoln re- Lincoln recruited um, recruited John Stevens, Stephen Jones's son, um, to be a walk on in Oklahoma. Now it didn't work out. You know. John Stephen wound up at Arkansas, uh, but Stephen did watch, sit down and watch tape with Lincoln Riley, and the Jones family thinks very, very highly of Lincoln Riley. They see him as an offensive savant, as most NFL people do, and so, you know, I do think that Lincoln Riley would be at or near the top of their list if they make a change in January, and that's the one job where, you know, I, I, I look at Lincoln Riley and I say to myself, if I'm him, um, that's probably a really, really, really difficult one to say no to. What about Urban to the Cleveland Browns? Is that a pipe dream for all the Ohio fans out there, Albert? What about that? I don't think Urban's. I, I, I don't think Urban's going to go to a place. See, and, and maybe it's a heartstrings thing for him. I. I think one of the reasons why Urban wouldn't take a job outside of a blue blood job in college is I don't think he could. I just don't think he'd want to go through a rebuild, and I don't know that he can handle it. You know, I mean, we've seen what one or two losses did to him a year at Ohio State. You know, we saw what losing a game or two a year would do to him at Florida. Um, you know, I just think that there's. If I think there's, you know, I think Urban's of a mind to listen, and will listen um, if NFL teams call. Um, I think if he's going to go back at the college level, it's going to have to be at a place where he feels like he can go 11 and one or 10 and two every single year um, and compete for national championships every single year. And if he goes to an NFL, um, uh, 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 an NFL uh, team, I think it's going to have to have two things. I think one, it's going to have to be, um, I think it's going to have to be a flagship franchise. And number two, I think it's going to have to be again, a place where he thinks he can win quickly and win consistently. And so, I don't. I, I. I. don't know whether or not he's done coaching, um, but I do think. But. 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 I. But I can tell you that. 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 My belief is that he'll listen if NFL teams call, and it's going to have to be the absolute right type of place. Which I, I would tell you right now, I think Dallas would be more of a possibility for him than Cleveland. I would mean, be. but what about the opinion or the uh, possibility of having on your resume? I took Ohio State and put them on a pedestal with the rest of the top elite programs in college football, and I turned – I mean, I, you can't say turned it around. And turn Cleveland. But, and, you know and, the other and guy then, who did and then, and then do the same thing for Cleveland, for the Browns, Albert. I you mean, know, forget you know it. the other guy who did that was? Mm-hmm. Go for it. Paul Brown. Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's what that's so what you're you talking about. <laughs> yes, right. That that he took the Cleveland yeah. Browns to where they needed to go, and then created the Bengals. Right. I mean, it's well, so yeah, to, I mean, to Paul leave your Brown, Paul Brown won a national championship at Ohio State, right. and then went to Cleveland and created the Browns and turned them into a powerhouse. So yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Only, yeah, I, I guess from that standpoint, it makes some sense. I. I uh, like I said, like I know how Urban, I, I know how tied Urban is to the state, and maybe again it would be a heartstrings thing. And obviously he he coached against Baker Mayfield twice in college, so he knows what Baker Mayfield is as a player, and maybe he feels like he could win there um, quickly. I just I think if he had any doubt about the infrastructure of a place, um, then I don't think he would do it. And my question would be whether or not the Cleveland Browns, who are a brand name NFL franchise, right? Uh, my question would be whether or not the Cleveland Browns could convince him that the infrastructure was in place where he could win consistently. And so what about the Browns' job in general, based on, on them being 5-7, and seven, the whole T-shirt business, the crown of the helmet nonsense, the craziness? And that has – by the way, if I told you prior to the season they're 5-7 and seven and the craziest thing that uh, Odell would be part of was him wearing a watch – um, during a game, <laughs> right? It's not. It's not Odell. The question is, what's wrong with the yeah. Browns, and what happened? And is Kitchens the guy? Where, where do you? Where do you? Where does your reporting stand on that subject? My 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 feeling right now would be that they are more likely to make 
to, to shuffle the staff than they are to make a change with the head coach. Um, because John Dorsey was all in on this guy. And John Dorsey, I, I don't think John Dorsey thought that Freddie was going to be a finished product in 2019. And I think that he knows that Freddie's failure is his failure. Like everyone in the NFL ties Freddie to him because he's the one who stuck his neck out, neck out and took a swing on the guy. Um, and so, you know, I, my, 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 Again, this is barring like things just com- coming completely undone over the next month. I think the likelihood would be that Freddie would be back, and there would be some structural changes to the staff. And I think one thing that could be on the table, Todd Monk and their offensive coordinator, who's really well thought of, I think it would be on the table potentially that maybe Todd Monk and winds up being the play caller in 2020, and maybe Freddie becomes more of a kind of a walk around type of head coach. Okay, last one for you here, Albert. What's the scuttlebutt on the draft as we're sitting? here right now it's a chase young joe burrow scenario or is two or is two are still lingering there with everybody thinking he'll be nice and healthy by march uh what what do you got for me on that front yeah you know and i think most of the teams that are looking at quarterbacks are sort of looking at the two-year outlay here and i think you know that where that takes us it takes us to trevor lawrence in 2021 um and you may remember in 2017 the browns and the jets did it that way and they wind up passing on the trubisky watson um, Mahomes class, and you know the Jets wind up with Darnold, and the Browns wind up with Mayfield the next year. Um, I certainly think there are going to be some teams that are going to look at it this way, that way this year, because the quarterback class has high end potential, um, but there are certainly questions with Joe Burrow. It's you know, well, he's only done it at this level for one year. With uh, with Justin Herbert, it's well, you know, the guy's super talented, but. Um, he's still really, really raw, and that's even after playing a lot of football. And with two others, obviously the injury stuff. And so, I think all three of those guys have like first round talent. Um, the question, there, there, there are questions surrounding each one of them, and that's where I think you know a team could decide. Yeah, maybe we'll take Chase Young number one, and we'll look forward towards 2021 when Trevor Lawrence is available and when Justin Fields could play his way into being a high first round pick as well. All right, I, did I do well here, Albert? I, I took the lumps. Uh... Did you like how I did you did, did you like did you like how I threw Justin Fields' name in there at the end? No, I didn't. Quite honestly, I mean, if you want to ask me a straightforward question about like dislike, I choose dislike. <laughs> but the kid is great, man, and your team is just uh, on fire. Um, and I look forward to seeing what the, I guess it'll be them against whoever sneaks in at four, right? That'll be it. We'll see. I mean, I, I, I'm still not convinced that the. Uh, I think we both know that it's a very SEC friendly. It just um, means more, um, Albert. Yeah, committee it, there. It just means more, so, right? The SEC. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I think it's a very. So, so, so. I don't think it would shock anyone with uh, who went to school in the region of the country that you and I went to school in if suddenly LSU winds up number one in the next week or two. I don't know. I, I just think they want to avoid Ohio State playing Clemson because we all know what happened the last time that happened in the college football oh. playoff. Do you like how I got that in there, or you don't like how I got that in there? Eyes and off the top <laughs> rope. <laughs> Take care of yourself, Albert. You got me there. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a response to that one. <laughs> Take care, bud. I appreciate it. We'll chat soon. That's yeah, Albert right. Breer of the MMQB. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.